It's good to look back, isn't it, on the year that we've had. had. And um, I'm just going to ask a question here. This isn't on the script. The question is, can anybody think of anything that happened this year which was really, really good in the life of our church? Uh, uh, hold on, oh, oh, there's too many, too many, too many people. Right, <clears throat> you're not allowed to say anything because you're taking part. <clears throat> Let me rubbish. Right, I'm going to hear voices. I'm going right over here. Come on. I'm sorry if this is being videoed. It's going to be a right mess. Keeler's baptism. Keeler's baptism. Whoa, that was fantastic. Anyone else? Yes, Tola. I've got Shirley as well. The make lunch. The make lunch. It sounds like the make lunch was a very small thing, but it was a big thing, and it was absolutely amazing. We were feeding uh, over uh, 50 people, weren't we, Frank? It was over 50 people throughout uh, two weeks, two days during the summer. August, we were putting out meals. The people came in, they had fun, and people are still coming to church as a result of it. It's great. Keith? The live nativity and all the people that came in from the community. Oh, man, there was about 300, I think we counted, maybe 350, who turned up, came in, and... Uh, we just shared the love of God and the joy of Christmas with people. Anyone else? Shirley? Oh, you can't have two. <laughs> the food pantry. Food pantry opened. Was it March? Yeah. It's been going nine months, giving away tons of food, literally, haven't you? Yep. Every week, people turn up, take food away, and it blesses them. Shirley? Oh, it's a long walk to the back. <laughs> oh. 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 Make lunch. Make lunch. Make lunch seems to be very popular. Um, oh, come in the front then. Come on. Come on then. Uh, God's provision in providing new cooking equipment so we can do all the things like make lunch Yay. and stuff. Yeah, we'll, we'll give you that one, Ash. Big cooker, induction hobs. Um, did, we, did we do the toilets this year? Oh, that was I can't talk about that. Did the what? Youth room's been done, decorated. Oh, Tola. I'll let you have another one. Yeah, the prayer and fasting weeks. Yeah, prayer and fasting weeks. Week. 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 Yeah. we got more coming, though, haven't we? They're going to be like buses. The night vigil. That was really good, wasn't it? And then we've had prayer every week in this church. Prayer meeting every week. So really good. Mick. Alpha. Alpha. Well, Alpha's been going on. Sarah was very quiet there, but Alpha's been happening, hasn't it? People have been listening and coming to know God. Excellent. But of course, we, we, we kind of, those are the highlights, but we have to recognise that week by week, good things are happening in this church. Week by week. So, you know, Stepping Stones, Awana, Coffee Morning, Lunch Plus, R&R, Refresh. Refresh. Yep, Cafe. <laughs> Sorry? Food bank. food bank. Yep, food bank's happening. Every Friday, people come in here. New members. New members. Youth pastor. Youth pastor. Man, he's just going so God is so good, isn't he? Actually, can I have the next slide, Maggie? Because I'll just, that does. Kind of... So last week, last year, that was our vision. 2023, we were hands and feet uh, because we are the body of Christ. And then I had a whole list of stuff um, community projects, building projects which keep going, building projects. Uh, prayer life for the church, obviously, whoosh, that's gone up. Outreach and events, youth work. Easter, if you remember Easter, we did Easter. That was great. We had escape rooms. We had oh, hundreds of people come through the door. Um, we fed them and told them about Jesus at Easter. The youth work, God's provision, church family. Wow. What a great year. And we're looking forward to 2024, that 2024 is going to be equally as exciting and great. So let's go back, what I, uh, because one more, Maggie. No, but oh, are we going backwards or forwards? I think we go forwards. Uh, okay, next one. No, go back one. <laughs> That's the one I want. Okay, so 2023, we talked about 2024, looking forward. And this year, we want to, be, we want to talk about the cross. The cross is going to be central to what we do because, um, cross. firstly, if we think about it, the cross is a place of love. Amazing love, isn't it? And we're going to talk about that in a little while, about how much God loves the world that he gave. Not only did he give somebody, but 
he allowed him to be crucified for us. So we're going to focus on the fact that the, the, the cross is an amazing place of love. And so the church community should be a place of love. And Jesus said, this is how you're going to know. People are going to know you're my disciples because you actually love one another. And what we want to do is we want to introduce people into church, um, into to Christ, in, into the church, and they will experience the love of God amongst us. That's the theory, isn't it? Make it the reality is what we need to do. The next, next is the places of transformation. Um, you think about the fact that the cross... There were three crosses. One guy said, oh, Jesus, you know, forget it. I don't believe in you. But the other guy would say, you know, basically, remember me. Remember me. And Jesus said to him, today you're going to be in paradise. Because at the cross we find transformation. Because we find people are loved by God, that the sacrifice of Jesus brings transformation. And the last thing is that the cross is a place of hope. What was terrible desperate, awful, actually is a place of hope for everyone. Because it's at the cross we can find Jesus and his sacrifice. So that's our kind of vision for 2024. Now, let's have another slide. Let's see what they look like. So the cross, and uh, kind of this came to me when we were doing, um, uh, we were doing the theology course, Theology on Tap. And this guy was talking about how... Um, when you think about the cross, there are two aspects to the cross. There is that horizontal aspect where we connect with God. We're loved by God, and, and et cetera, et cetera. But also there's that horizontal aspect which embraces all of us. So actually, we, when, when we think about the cross, it's not just about me and God, but it's actually about me being in a community of people who share the same belief and faith, who share the same love, who share the same desires and vision. And so the cross brings us close to God or brings us to God, but also means that we together are the community of God's people. And so uh, that's the two aspects of the cross. We're going to talk now, Ashley's going to come up and talk about 2024. Some of the things that we have in our heart, um, as it says, a place of love, a place of transformation, a place of hope. Thanks, Will. Uh, you have to bear with me today. A uh, bit of a frog in the throat. Um, but um, those are the three areas that we're going to be looking at um, for 2024. And if we can have the next slide, please, Maggie. Uh, yeah, spring. So, uh, no, sorry, spring. Uh, so this is now, really. Um, so through till about sort of end of April, uh, this is what our focus is going to be. Uh, we're going to focus on that place of love. And in the spring term, we are going to do Sunday teaching on the theology of the cross. Um, and there will be an opportunity at some point to go deeper into some of that stuff as well. Uh, we're also going to participate in, or we would like to participate, in the Lent course. Now, the Lent course is something that's being run not by us, but by one church in Basingstoke. And there are a number of sessions, one on AI, uh, and the title of the whole series is God's Better Story. Uh, there's one on gender, there's one on parenting in the digital age, abortion, suicide. The parenting in the digital age, that is one that we are hosting here. Um, so we can not just be a community here, we can be a community in terms of the whole one church in Basingstoke by getting to know other people at other churches as well. We've got Messy Church running, as usual. We have the prayer retreat that we've already mentioned um, with uh, Natalie, is it? Yeah. yeah, from Guildford, from Emmaus Road, coming along to spend the day with us and talk to us about prayer. And we'll already mentioned that Easter uh, in 2023 was such a, such a special day, that, that day when so many people came out uh, from the community. We received such positive feedback about it. And, you know, to put something on like that um, was a real boost for a lot of people in our community because they didn't have anywhere to take their kids, they couldn't afford to do it, stuff like that. And to come here and to have those activities in the escape room and for us to be able to share the story of Easter with them in a very subtle way. Uh, and it was just brilliant, absolutely amazing. So we're going to be doing Easter again. 
But we are also going to have a Good Friday service uh, because obviously the Easter Community Fund Day will be on the Sunday. Um, so we need to make sure that we have the opportunity to celebrate uh, Easter ourselves. So we'll be having a Good Friday service. So those are some of the things that are going to be going on in that, in that first sort of two or three months uh, of the year. Then moving on into the summer term, when we talk about being a place of transformation, um, we're going to be running the Alpha course again. Um, when we had the business meeting, we shared some of this with the guys that were, were out for that meeting. And uh, we were asked, well, it'd be really good to do something on personal evangelism as well. So that, at the time, wasn't necessarily part of what we'd baked in for this year. So we are going to do some training in personal evangelism. So thank you for uh, that being suggested to us. We're going to be doing Make Lunch again. It was such a tremendous thing to do. Um, the people that we <coughs> fed um, just, well, I think you all saw that video that we showed earlier, uh, or end of last year, that Lily story of one of the children who came along. And it was such a tremendous thing to see and hear. Uh, and it's just another way of changing lives, uh, another way for us to be that place of transformation. So Make Lunch is going to be very much part of our summer program, and we need loads of people to help with that. So you will be asked if you're available at some point or other. We're going to do Sunday teaching on the book of Ephesians and as I mentioned we're going to be doing some going deeper sessions as well I think the going deeper sessions that we did in 23 really went down well um, and maybe we can get some more of you out to those as well um, including me I have to hands up I didn't go to any of them um, but that's just the way it was for me at that time so let's let's get involved let's go deeper let's find out <coughs> more um, the Great Summer Exchange event with barbecue. This is kind of a bit like, I don't know if you remember, we used to do Green Day. Um, so there'd be lots of activities, there'd be bicycle maintenance, there'd be uh, the men's shed coming out to do repairs of electrical stuff and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, but what we want to do on the Great Summer Exchange is also to be able to have things like a toy exchange, yeah? Or a clothes exchange and stuff like that. And if you've got any ideas about that, we'd love to hear from you. Um, you know, again, it's about getting the community in, um, helping them and sharing with them. We're going to have a barbecue. It'll all be free. We're going to promote it. And then we've got the camping weekend, uh, which goes down really well uh, with a lot of you. I'm not a camper. I'm more of a glamper. Uh, and it's not quite glamping standard enough for me. Um, but um, it is... No, it's controversial, I know. Controversial, I know. <laughs> Um, it is actually, it, it's not under canvas, it is actually in pods and stuff like that, so it is more glamping than camping. Um, I'm just a bit beyond all of that at the moment. So, um, one, <laughs> one other thing that we think is really important for 24 is that we want to prayer walk the community. So throughout the whole <laughs> month of May, I think that's right, isn't it, Tola? May, uh, we're going to be going walking the streets of our community and praying. Um, so that's something you can do in an organized way or it's something you can just get up and go and do, go and stand on the street and pray. Um, so we're really excited for that. And we're going to have a week of prayer and fasting. Um, and then finally, we're going to use that term uh, to have a review of uh, caring and serving within Buckskin. Uh, as a church. So it's not just about what's out there, it's about what's, what's inside here as well. How we care for each other um, as individuals. And as Will said, there's two aspects of the cross, the vertical and the sideways. So this is very much about the sideways, how we care for each other, um, how we care for our leaders, how all, all that sort of stuff. So it's, it's going to be quite an interesting term, that one. An awful lot going on. And then finally, we've got the autumn term, which is uh, the cross being a place of hope. So we're going to have a week of prayer, uh, another alpha course, or and a nurture course. Uh, we haven't nailed that one down yet. Um, we're very conscious that uh, we're running alpha. Um, what comes after alpha? 
So we do need to nurture people that have gone through Alpha and come out the other side as well. So there's a bit of discussion to go on on that one. Um, it's not all sort of uh, uh, the page isn't coloured in yet. We're going to have an evangelism event. We haven't done one of those for a few years, probably because COVID gone away. Um, but we don't know who, but we're going to invite uh, a, a celebrity along, a Christian celebrity. Uh, it'll be a fun evening, so you can bring <coughs> along your friends uh, and uh, we can tell them that this is a place of hope. There's going to be a teaching weekend. Uh, again, uh, it'll be like we've had in the past couple of years. We'll have guest speaker come in for the weekend. Um, and I know this sounds as if we're not fully prepared, but again, that page is not totally coloured in. But we're working our way through and we're getting there. So uh, it will be happening. We're going to have International Sunday. I don't know about you, but I love International Sunday. I absolutely love all that food um, from different countries. Uh, I love seeing you all dressed up in national costumes. This is mine, by the way. Um, um, we're going to do Make Lunch Christmas special. We did that this year. Uh, having done Make Lunch in 23, I'll say this year, 23, uh, we were asked by those who came along and said it would be really nice if we could share something at Christmas as well. So we, we did that. It was fantastic, and we want to do it again. There will be the Christmas events program, uh, very much part of our outreach with the carol service and live nativity uh, animals are already booked so they're coming uh, we just need you and everybody else to turn up as well um, yeah I think that's it I've put evangelistic event twice on my notes but uh, yeah so Christmas carol service live nativity and a Christmas day service and, and that's it you know um, as Will said we want uh, we want to focus on the cross uh, and those are the three parts of what we're going to be looking at uh, over the course of 2024. Um, and as the song said, be thou my vision, O ruler of all. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. <clears throat> lots happening, lots to think about. Um, we will be writing to those who are members of the church just to outline all this kind of stuff. And we just want you to be involved. And we want you to be involved in the activities, but also for you to be a person who is part of the community of the cross where Christ is central. So I'm going to ask that we pray, actually. Let's just take a few moments, shall we? We've talked a lot, and I just want us to take a moment to commit all these things to God. Father, we thank you that many years ago you gave people the vision to plant this church. And we thank you for their obedience. And we thank you that you have been working in this place ever since. We thank you for what you have built. We, Father, we realize that all the glory goes to you. Father, we thank you for the building, which is amazing. Most of all, Father, we thank you for this community, a, people, a group of people, Father, who love you. <clears throat> and are committed to you. But also, Father, a group of people who love one another. And Father, we want to pray that you would bind us together in your love. That, Father, as we focus on the cross this year, we want to pray that this place will become a place of love. That your love is felt and expressed. We want to pray, Father, it would be a place of transformation where lives are changed forever, where people come to know Christ where their eternal life is secured. And, Father, that they start to follow Jesus as Lord and Saviour. And lastly, Father, we pray this will be a place of hope, a place where people come and can find hope for themselves and for their futures. Father God, we pray this year, Lord, that you would bless your church, that it would follow you in your ways and in your example. It would be a place where your spirit resides, and people come to know Jesus. And we ask it all now in his name. Amen. 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 So, <clears throat> I have been given the task of preaching. And according to the clock, I've got, <clears throat> excuse me, 15 minutes. Can that be done? Okay. One and a half. 
can't do one and a half points. So um, I want to speak about the cross itself. Um, we uh, are going to be looking at this over the next few weeks, but this is kind of a bit of an introduction, really. And as you can see in the slide, uh, there is a verse which some of you at the back might not be able to see, but it's 1 Corinthians 1, verse 18. It says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Okay, the power of God is found in the cross of Jesus. And of course, as Christians, is something that uh, symbolizes our faith. But it's weird, isn't it? Because the cross is one of the most awful things that the Romans ever had. Cicero, got that name right, described crucifixion as the most cruel and hideous of tortures. He said, let the very nature of the cross be far, from, far away, not only from the body of a Roman citizen, but even in his thoughts, his eyes and ears. So the cross is a terrible place. Awful. People who are tortured on the cross, um, and I've got loads of facts if you're really interested in how awful it was, I could read it to you. But the Bible focuses very much on the cross. Billy Graham says one third of Matthew, one third of Mark, and one fourth of Luke, and one half of John are given to Christ's death. Jesus came for the, very, for the express purpose of dying for sinners. When he left heaven, he knew he was going to the cross. So that was Jesus' purpose in coming. We've celebrated Christmas, but now we realize that the cross Actually, as we think about Easter, it's not that far away. But Jesus, when he left heaven, knew where he was going. He was going to die on this instrument of torture and death. And he went through all that someone being crucified would have gone through. Would have had the, the nails through his wrists to hold him. They would have crossed over his, his legs and they would have nailed a, a, a large stake through his feet. And that would have held him on the cross Six hours on the cross in un unimaginable pain because he'd already been flogged and his back was, was torn to shreds. He would have died a horrible death. But the Bible is very clear. He died it for you and for me. And so three things, not one and a half, says Ryan. Firstly, it's just a love. Love, love, love. And the people who stood around the cross wouldn't have realized that. But as we look at the whole of Scripture, we see that Jesus died on a cross. It was an act of unfathomable love for the world. John 3, 16. Don't see it at the football matches anymore, do you? Didn't see it at uh, Portman Road yesterday. But that great verse, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And that was the purpose of God, that one man would lay his down, life down so that everyone else might have eternal life. But not just a man, not just any man, but the son of God gave his life for you and for me. Wow. Remember, I've, I've said this before, when I was a young person, which was last century. We used to go and do open airs on Bournemouth in, in Bournemouth. We used to be out there, and we had this little... Um, we had an abishek who would play the guitar, and we would all stand around and sing, and uh, one guy, Colin, Colin Richards, great, my great youth leader, he would stand up and preach, and uh, he said, if you were the only person in the whole world the only person who ever lived, Jesus would have died for you. Jesus would have done it for you. And that's always struck me because it, it makes it really personal, doesn't it? That God's love, you know, we think about God loving the whole world, how wonderful that is. But actually God loves you that much. So much that he gave Jesus to die for you. It's personal. And that is the wonder of the cross, that we see God's unfathomable love expressed for each of us. A love that actually we see expressed, but when we come to know Christ, we share in that love. 
It says in Ephesians 3, and I love this, and I love the, these verses. Paul says, I pray out of the glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in, his inner, in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge. So what he's saying is basically when we think about the cross, we have kind of the width and the height and we have all that, but actually Paul's praying that they experience the love of Christ for themselves. And I want you today to know that you are loved. That you are truly loved by God. Because he sent his only son for you. And so as we think about the cross, we will think about the great love of God that was expressed. Sending Jesus to the cross for you and for me. So that's point one. Point two goes on to say that actually there is unlimited forgiveness. Have you been a good boy today? Been a good girl today? Have you messed up already? Have you said things you shouldn't have said? Have you thought things you shouldn't have thought? Because you see, the cross is a place of forgiveness. Absolute, total forgiveness. Unlimited forgiveness. And Jesus was testing his disciples. How many times do I need to forgive? Oh, seven times. And then he talked about 70 times 7, and, you know, that's 490, isn't it? And, and, but what Jesus was saying was actually forgiveness needs to be unlimited. We shouldn't put a number on it. Well, I'll forgive you again, and that's it. Because that's not how God works. God forgives us completely everything because of the cross. And, of course, we, <clears throat> we know that um, Jesus was described as the Lamb of God, and uh, that takes back to the Old Testament where when people needed to be forgiven, they would take a, a lamb and they would sacrifice it. The blood would be shed and because the blood was shed, they would be forgiven. And they would be forgiven on that day. And then, of course, they'd go away and they'd sin again and they have to come back and make more sacrifices. And, but what, Jesus, what the Bible says is that there was one sacrifice, one sacrifice for all, for all time. And you think about it, because Jesus was the son of God, didn't have to die for his own sin, but a sacrifice so great that it covers everybody's sin for all time. Now, not everybody chooses forgiveness. Not everybody confesses their sins. But actually, the death of Jesus meant that everyone can be forgiven. And if you're a Christian today, if you know and love God, you have been forgiven. Okay? Okay? Confess just if you've confessed the rubbish to God, God takes it, gets rid of it. It's gone. And that's because of the cross of Christ. It comes down to the fact that God loves you so much that He wants your life to be free from evil and sin. He forgives you completely if you ask. And there's that lovely verse, isn't there? From 1 John 1, verse 9. It says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purifies, purifies from all, all, all unrighteousness. So that's everything, okay? Your slate is clean. You are forgiven because of the death of Jesus on the cross. It's hard to believe, isn't it, that something so awful can mean so much to you and I. So over the next few weeks, we'll look at the theology of why Jesus died and the difference it makes to us. But we can be forgiven for everything. And maybe there are things that haunt you in your life. Those thoughts come, I did this. It was terrible. And maybe it was. But in Jesus there is forgiveness. Okay, last one. I told you it's really quick. Unlimited salvation. The sacrifice of Jesus was so great that it meant the whole world, the whole world, all time, people could be forgiven. Heaven is big enough for everyone. 
Not everyone will choose to go there, but it's big enough for all. It says here, 1 Peter 2, 24, for those at the back who can't see it. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. The promise is that if we come to Jesus, we will be forgiven. We will have a new life. A new life. Um, I was talking to Banke t- this week, and we were talking about how the youth at the moment are doing Alpha. Today they're doing Why Did Jesus Die? And we talked about the bridge illustration and how the bridge is such a perfect illustration of what Jesus has done for us. And if you don't know what the bridge is, um, so I'll see Sarah afterwards, she'll show it to you. But basically, it's the, 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 it's the gap between us and God that we cannot bridge because of the, the things we do will never get us to heaven, never get us to God. You might be really good at praying. You might pray your socks off. But if you don't know Jesus and you haven't used the cross as a bridge, you won't know God in the way you should. You might be giving all your money to the church. Hallelujah. Love it. Don't stop. <laughs> that won't get you to heaven. You might be reading the Bible with Nicky Gumble every day. I've done it for like four years. That won't get you to heaven. It's only through the cross, through the death of Jesus, that we reach God. He is the one who bridges the chasm between us and God. And anyone can cross over. And that's what I like about the bridge. Because when I do the bridge illustration, Sarah, I'll show you. Basically, you say, well, where are you on this illustration? Have you used the cross to come to know God? Have you used the cross as a bridge to come to know God? And I say to people, where are you? Do you know God yet? And they say, well, I haven't used the bridge. I'm still on this side. Others would say, yeah, I've come to know God. I've used that bridge as a cross. And now I know Jesus in my life. My life has been changed. Not only for here, but forever. Forever. I don't know about you. As I get older, I think more about death. Oh, come on. You know, the clock's ticking, isn't it? Let's be honest. And maybe I'm, you know, maybe I'm thinking too much in advance. But you do. And you think to yourself, you know, I believe all this stuff. I believe all this stuff. And I believe when my eyes close for the final time, when I say goodbye to my family, I'll go to be with Jesus because of the cross. Because he's made that bridge between us and God. And that's what is the wonder of the cross, isn't it? That's whosoever can come. And, uh, when you're nine or you're 95, you can come and know Jesus. And surely that's the greatest thing, isn't it? Ultimately, we, 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 we find that on the cross, there is the love of God. There is the forgiveness of God. And there is salvation. We can be saved. But ultimately, the greatest thing is to know Jesus in our life day by day. As our friend, as our companion, as our saviour. And that's what we have as God's people, don't we? However, this year we want to be a community of the cross. So that means two things. There we go. Firstly, we come to Jesus as we are every day and that we share our life with him and we ask him to be with us and bless us and walk with us and watch over us and our families and and work in us. But the second thing is that we go and share. Because what you have is amazing. You have love and you have forgiveness and you have salvation. That's all yours. The problem is sometimes as people we kind of say, it's great, isn't it? I've got it. I've got it and I'm going to heaven, and yeah, I've got all this. But surely the heart we should have is to share the good news with others. And so as God's community 
of people here in Buckskin as a community of cross. We need to live our lives for Jesus, but we need to share it with others. And that's our heart for 2024, that we share what we have with other people, that we invite them, we go out, and we, we just share Jesus with people. And we share the good news of the cross. Because as Paul says in Corinthians, it is the power of God to change lives, both here on earth and for eternity. The question is, will you come to Jesus and will you share him with others? Amen. Let's pray together, shall we? Invite the team to come back up. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the cross. Lord, we realise as we think about the cross, it was a terrible thing that you went through. The Son of God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Glory, nailed to a piece of wood, hung there for six hours, dying, bleeding to death, in great pain. And Lord, we just, we are amazed that your love, that you gave yourself for this world so that we might know the Father. We thank you too, Lord, that as, as you died, Lord, you showed your love, but also you opened the way that we might know and be forgiven. That all our sins were put upon that cross. They were laid on you so that we might not have to bear them. And we thank you too that the cross is a place of salvation. That through Jesus' death we are saved. We have become the people of God, the children of God. Lord, we thank you and we bless you for that. And I pray for each of us, Lord. May we just come to know you. May we walk with you. May our lives be shaped by you. But Lord, give us a heart to share you with others. May this church be a place where people come and find Jesus, where hearts are changed, where lives are changed, where people come to know him. Lord, may your spirit use us and bless us. And we pray it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing a couple of songs, aren't we, about the cross. It gives us an opportunity <clears throat> to worship Christ to thank him for what he's done for us. Let's stand to sing, shall we?
church, I invite you to close your eyes and um, stay in an attitude of worship. Um, in the Bible, in the book of First Samuel, Samuel is very sad about King Saul. He's mourning for him. But the very thing that he was mourning for, God himself was grieving. He was grieving for the same thing that Samuel was mourning for. But at one point, God says to Samuel, you have been mourning for too long. And that is some of you here tonight, this morning, sorry. You have been mourning for too long. And God is interested in you, even if you're just one sheep. He wants to come after you. If you've been moaning about something over a lost parent, a lost child, or some circumstance or situation that you are moaning about now, a regret of the past perhaps, will you lay it down at the feet of Jesus now, at the cross? Because God has a new set of instructions for you, just like he gave Samuel a new set of instructions. But he had to let go of the mourning and place it, give it to God, because he is not done with you yet. He has plans for your life. And if that's some of you here tonight, today, I just ask that you will willfully surrender. And blessed are you who mourn, for you will be comforted. And that's the beauty of his love. There's another group of us who are very familiar with the cross. It's become so familiar because you just heard about it year after year. And for those of us who have become, for whom it has become familiar, can we ask God to give us a new sense of wonder and awe at what He's done for us? Okay. 
Once again. 